So we are in that spot. Now, let me be more specific. What happened in this period um, is that a lot of government debt was sold. And it was sold to um, a lot of buyers. So let's when you look at uh, Silicon uh, Valley Bank situation, and it's important to understand that that's just one example of an enormous number of uh, cases in which um, short-term borrowing uh, was used to finance the purchase of a lot of government bonds and and bonds beyond that, um, mortgage payments uh, and also corporate bonds and so on because money was given away free. I mean, think about it this way, the interest rate um, was the government interest rate was 0.7%. Um, uh, you know, low grade credits were about, you know, three and a half percent interest rate, but they also had interest only loans. So it meant you only had to, you really didn't have to pay hardly anything to get money. So we have all of that debt that, and now the government bonds have gone down and it's fund, funded by short term debt which the cost of money has gone up. Now that's not just banks. That's not just the United States. That's a world phenomenon. It existed in Europe because the central banks there in Europe um, provided money like that. Imagine they created negative interest rates um, for money. So how does somebody make money holding an uh, a bond that has a negative interest rate? The way you do it is you have a more negative short-term interest rate that you borrow to fund it. And so that's what went on and that's what we have. So if you look at, let's say, if you marked to market the the bonds that, at, at existing rates, um, you have a lot of terribly um, financially hurt negative net worth entities around the world. The world is leverage long. So we have that dynamic going on at the same time as we have the other things that I was referring to. So that's the financial dynamic. Yeah. Um, on that, you're mentioning like cracks starting to appear. Um, and I know you wrote a piece about Silicon Valley Bank's downfall being the canary in the coal mine. Can we just explore that a bit further? I'd love to hear more on that. Like. Um, your thoughts on where this could head and also at the same time, your views on um, the interest rate outlook here in the US and some of the implications of like what could break next. Um, so the canary in the coal mine is meant to reflect two things. Uh, first, that the um, it's not just the Silicon Valley Bank. It is a pervasive thing about holding a lot of debt that has gone down in value. Um, and being leveraged long, so it's a pervasive thing. And also meant to convey that there's a sequence of events that are like dominoes falling. So for example, those who are hurt financially and have a lot of that debt don't want to buy more of that debt, yet the government is going to have to sell the debt. In other words, when they run, run a deficit, that means they have to sell bonds and they're um, and all of those who have bought bonds, including foreigners um, who are increasingly worried about um, even uh, the value of the debt, um, but also uh, sanctions. Sanctions means that, you know, you freeze the debt. Um, so certain holders of the debt say I've got a lot of U.S. dollar denominated debt. And I already have maybe too much. And then do I want to buy more? And so you have um, an imbalance there in terms of selling and buying, which is a risky situation. In addition, there's this sequence of events that takes place, such as um, those who were making loans, uh, banks who now are suffering from this condition, don't want to make as much loans and so if you look at, let's say, uh, like regional banks, 
those regional banks make a lot of loans to for uh, residential real estate, excuse me, commercial real estate, although it's a, there's a problem with residential too. But um, so if you look at um, real estate, commercial real estate, um, there's um, it's, it's vulnerable and they, but they haven't gotten the consequences that are yet to come in the form of running out of adequate cash flow and not having the money and then having to sell assets and so on. And so you can see in different parts of the economy, like um, companies um, that were, um, let's say negative cash flow companies that had uh, a lot of uh, venture capital investors in them, um, not like a number of either tech companies or, you know, new concept companies that had negative um, cash flow because they would either borrow to finance their gap or they would raise equity to finance their gap. That no longer exists in those cases. So they have to have the markdown of those assets. They haven't marked them down yet. And as they mark them down, that means losses for those who are holding those positions. And it means that right now there's not the same amount of money to lend to it. So those group. So anyway, I can go on and on, but there's a sequence of events that takes place that by nature reduces the amount of credit creation as a result of that. And um, and that weakens um, the economy, particularly certain parts of the economy. Um, I would say that what the government sector did, the government and the Federal Reserve, is they uh, got a lot more in debt and they printed the money. Um, and now they own these kinds of bonds and they gave more money as a result, transferred more money to the household sector. And so the household sector uh, is in a better shape, uh, but it is shrinking as part of the process. So. That's the dynamic um, as we're passing that through. And that's not just a U.S. dynamic. That's a world dynamic, which, again, is happening at the same time as there's the political internal fighting over our wealth and values. That's playing a role like and it enters into tax policy. How will you deal with the gap? What will you know, let's say as we're dealing with the um, debt ceiling. There's two philosophies of the debt ceiling, right? And, uh, okay, so there's probably going to be a conflict over those two philosophies for the debt ceiling. Um, so we have political situations. And when we come into the 2024 elections, these things are going to be bigger. So you see a fragmentation. You see people moving from one state to another for these various reasons and so on. And, you know, that's all happening while we have the same types of conflicts internationally with, uh, you know, the great powers. Mm -hmm.